This is a IB business management video uh, based on the financial unit and it will be focusing it'll be focusing on efficiency ratios. So we'll be going to be look at the uh, the main efficiency ratios in terms of a uh, stock turnover. We're going to be looking at uh, debtor days and creditor days and we're going to be looking at gearing as well. So the first one we're going to look at is stock turnover. Now in terms of stock turnover, there's two different calculations that we'll consider today. We'll look at the, uh, the amount of times they turn over their stock, and we'll also look at the, uh, in terms of days as well. So how many days does it take to turn the purchase of stock into sales? So when we're considering uh, times, again, uh, they'll provide you all the financial information. You just need to interpret the figures uh, and pick out the information that you may need. Um, so in, in times, it's cost of sales uh, divided by the value of the inventories or uh, just the, the average value of the stock. So the example that's been provided by Tutor to you is uh, the cost of sales is £13,465. Uh, the, the average stock value is uh, £1,325. Uh, just divide it and the amount is 10.2 times. So within this given time period, they turn over their stock 10.2 times. Now, in terms of the time period, they will let you know what the time period is. It could be yearly, it, it could be quarterly, it just depends on the given scenario. Now, in terms of uh, is 10.2 times, is it, is it a good amount? Well, that, that massively depends. Hopefully in the case that you'll, you'll have something to compare it to. Now it might be previous years or it might be the industry average, but what you're hoping for is the higher the better. The more times they turn over their stock means the more efficient they're being. The other efficiency could be in terms of maybe uh, in sales, so that they're having to turn over the stock uh, at a faster rate because of the amount of sales, or maybe it's because they're efficient with stock management as well. Maybe they carry out some form of lean production, uh, for example, just in time, where they're very effective, they're very efficient with the stock and when they need the stock. The second one is in days, and you can see there's a, there's a slight change in the formula. So this time it's the value of the inventories or the, the average value of the stock uh, divided by the cost of sales. So that's actually reversed. And then what you do is you times it by 365 as that's uh, obviously the days within the year. So usually the time period will be that year. And what you actually want here is the opposite to times. You want it to be um, a, a lower amount of days because the lower amount of days suggests that you are much more efficient. So again, you're turning over the stock in a much faster period of time. So therefore you're having to um, restock uh, again faster, meaning you do it more so. Now, when you're calculating um, the stock turnover, if it will specifically say if it's in days they want or if it's in times they want, but just make sure that you do reference it in your final answer. Don't just put the amount. Okay, so for example here, don't just put 10.2 and that is it because the examiner could, could interpret that, that you mean it's in, it's in uh, days or it's in times. It won't get you the answer. You have to make sure that you write 10.2 times or for example, um, days, whatever the days might be. Now, when looking at stock turnover, it is completely dependent on the industry. So for example, it'd be, it'd be completely unfair to compare different industries. If you think about the supermarket industry, they're going to have a really, really fast stock turnover because of the nature of the products that they sell within the store. They sell such a wide variety of household goods that again, probably low in price, that can be easily bought, um, that you couldn't compare that to, for example, a, a luxury car dealer, dealership. Because if you think about a premium car, their, their stock turnover is obviously going to be much lower due to the price of the um of the product, uh, the amount of times it will be sold, the amount of time, the cost of the product as well, how, how much they can actually afford to stock. So you, if you're going to compare, you have to compare it within the, within the industry and not across industries. And you also probably have to do it within years. But again, the case study will probably give you an average industry um, stock turnover for you to, for you to compare. Okay, so the next one is debtor days. Now, many of my students get mixed up between debtors and creditors. Just remember, a, a debtor would come in your balance sheet as a trade receivable, so as a current asset. 
And what that means is, is that you've issued the trade credit to a customer and you're waiting for that payment to be made by the customer. Now, reasons why you'd, you'd allow for debtor days is probably as a, as a marketing technique, as a marketing strategy, because it could give you a competitive advantage because you've offered better credit terms to your customer. There might also be just an acceptance within the industry that you have to give debtor days. Uh, just maybe because, for example, the, well, the example that I use, if you think about um, kitchen, maybe kitchen appliance suppliers supplying to new restaurants. Again, there might be the understanding that the restaurant is unable to make the payment until they're actually functioning as a business and so they'd allow them uh, the, the days to make that payment. So what you do, the formula is trade debtors divided by the revenue. Okay, uh, in terms of revenue, um, it might, it, sometimes it might be called sales, but you'll be able to know the difference because it'll have uh, the, the monetary value, which tells you that it's sales revenue. So again, the revenue here is 21,450 pounds. The, the trade receivables are 4,030 pounds. And the debtor days therefore is 68.6 .6 days. Now, in terms of debtor days, you probably want them to be as, as low as possible. Okay, you want them to be as low as possible, and especially in comparison to credit days, which I'll look at in a second. But the longer they are, the longer the debtor days, I suppose, the greater the risk. And the greater the risk means um, the risk to cash flow. If you give them longer time, then that means that you are not receiving that inflow. And again, the longer the days, the harder it is to manage maybe. And that could suggest maybe, um, for example, would you have to introduce factors if, for whatever reason, it was um, they went past the due date? Now, the creditors are the opposite, okay? So it would come on your balance sheet as your, your trade payables. So in other words, it's when you've received the trade credit from the supplier and you are it's your financial obligation, it's your payment to make. Then this, um, the, the formula, trade payables divided by the cost of sales. Um, I probably should also make clear for creditors and debtor days, if it asks for it in days, just times it by 365, okay? So if you do 13,465, and if you get the trade payables of 2,310, so let's do that now, 2,310, divided by 13,465, you get 0.17155589. Times that by 365, round it, you get 62.6 .6 days. Now, um, in terms of creditor days, it's, it's, it's good for you because it eases your cash flow. And what that means is it delays your outflows. It helps you to manage your cash uh, much better. So it, it is, the higher the creditor days, the probably the better for you it is in terms of managing payments. At, but what's really key, and they do this in a lot in exams, again, across all different specs, what they tend to do is they tend to give you either a, a, probably a cash flow and they ask you um, to use maybe efficiency ratios to, to assess the impact of credited days and debtor days on the cash flow. Now, again, just remember, if your debtor days are, are higher than your credited days, then that means that you are not receiving your inflows before you are making your payments to your suppliers. So that means your cash flow is going to be it's going to be negatively impacted. What you want is your debtor days to be lower than your creditor days to help that cash flow. So finally, the gearing ratio. Now the gearing ratio relates to your dependency on loan capital. So it looks at your uh, your long term liabilities divided by your capital employed, and it's demonstrated as a percentage, so times by 100. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to allow you to have a go at the gearing ratio in the question below, and you can also have a go at the other answers as well in terms of the other efficiencies and um, formulas that we've looked at. So, this question is asking you for comparisons and is asking you to look at 2010 and 2011. Remember, you can only do the calculations which the financial figures allow you to do. So I'll give you, uh, if you want to pause it now and have a go at the calculations. Okay, so the answers are here. So your inventories, you should have got for 2010, 49 times, and your inventories for 2011 is 52.67 times. 
see there, they're much more efficient in 2011. In 2010, again, for inventory days this time, it's 7.4 days. Um, in 2011, it's 4.7 days. So again, in 2011, they're much more efficient. The debtor days um, in 2010 are 66.06 uh, days. However, in 2011, it's 67.65 days. So actually, in 2011, in terms of debtors, they're, they're inefficient. The creditor days, 2010, 64.56. But in 2011, 64.68. So again, they're inefficient within this. But if you compare them, okay, if you compare both figures in 2010 and 2011, their debted days are higher than their credited days. So this business uh, shouldn't really be facing, and it's still quite tight, but it, they shouldn't be facing that much of a cash flow problem. Uh, again, the gearing. So what you've got here. And I'm going to look at gearing in a little bit more detail now, but the gearing for 2010 is 17.95% and the gearing in 2011 is 16.46%. So what you'd say is in 2011, they were less dependent. Now, many textbooks will say, well, 2011 is better then. And many textbooks say the higher the gearing, uh, the worse it is. But that's not always the case. It completely depends. It completely depends on the contextual situation of the business. Yes, if they've got higher gearing, there's this higher risk because when you borrow from a bank, then there's always going to be risk involved. If, for example, there's any external factors that impact the business and they've got collateral, they've got security and they're unable to make that payment, then yes, they've got problems. But at the same time, if you think about it from this point of view, the higher the gearing means that they're, yes, they're higher, they're more dependent on loan capital, but they're less dependent on other types of capital. So for example, they're less dependent on share capital. Now, if they're less dependent on share capital, they don't need to give up as much control of their business. So therefore, again, depending on the application, that might be really, really important to the business. And again, even if they are, if you, even if they are highly dependent on gearing and, they, and they've chosen to spend, to use gearing as, um, as a source, then as long as they can manage the business well, and as long as their finances are manageable, okay, then it shouldn't be an issue. So just be careful in jumping into a conclusion that the higher the gear and the worse, because it's not always the case.